I was seven years old the day Star Wars hit the silver screen. And boy, did that change my life. Whenever I hear the John Williams Rebel theme and I see that yellow scroll of fading into space, it sends shivers down my spine. It still does so today, even after all those years, even after Jar Jar Binks. I have never seen anything like this before. Luke, although older than me, was just an average boy that was thrown into this larger than life adventure, taken on a Death Star in his tiny X-Wing and blown it all up. I was open mouthed in wonder. In my imagination, Luke was not so different from me. I was an average kid, blonde, a dreamer. Maybe I could be like Luke. The Force might come to me one day, I just had to wait. And then Battlestar Galactica aired. Maybe you remember the old movie series with Lorne Green and Dirk Benedict as the hotshot pilot Starbuck. Although not as grand in special effects as the Star Wars movies, I just loved Battlestar Galactica. The ship design was majestic and the soundtrack awe-inspiring. I loved those wipers, man. They were fast and deadly and those afterburners made them just go zoom like an X-Wing never did. The best of all those pilots was of course Starbuck himself. He was cocky. Well, he did not take orders too well. In that sense, he was the opposite of Luke, more like Han. The guy who shot first. But he got away with it all because he was the definition of cool. And was sincerely kicking some silent ass. I had an X-Wing and the Galactica, and all sorts of Star Wars franchise. My childhood was filled with wonderful memories of me and my friends playing out those adventures in faraway galaxies. Since then, I'm an addict to space, because space held a secret promise for me. The promise that one day my childhood dreams would come true in some galaxy far, far away. I just had to get older grow up a little and then the force would come to me somehow and I would save the day. I just had to believe. In retro perspective, my childhood dreams had come true, although not the way I pictured it out as a 10 year old of course. I grew up with an open mind. I embraced imagination and wonders. Okay, okay, yeah, I guess I was a geek, although it wasn't called that back then. My parents thought I was a little bit crazy and strange, but the good thing was, I was not the only one. My friends were just like me and still we wouldn't know how to kick a ball around, so it wasn't too grim looking for us. I learned many a lesson as a kid that defined the man I am today. I learned that you can overcome any obstacle, no matter how big, may it be a Death Star or a silent fleet, if you just believed in yourself and maybe had the force on your side. I learned that friends are the most important things in life. Yeah, friends that share your dreams and cover your back. That you can call in the middle of the night when you're stranded in the middle of nowhere. Starbuck had Apollo and Luke had Han and Han had of course Chewie. <coughs> My childhood heroes could not have made it on their own. They had their wingmans to cover them up. I learned that dreams are worth fighting for, that good will overcome evil even if it wears a black mask and that you can overcome your fears in spite of being afraid. Fearful situations do come with opportunities if you just dare to take upon them. Years passed and I grew into an adult. I eventually got into computer games. When the first X-Wing came out, I was climbing that cockpit. I played TIE Fighter vs X-Wing 2. Although I enjoyed those games, they felt slightly short to my expectations. These games were just a series of technical challenges that I had to overcome. I was somewhat missing the narrative, the hero to identify with. And then, out of nowhere came Wing Commander, a game by Chris Roberts. It was a narrative epic. Well, back in the days, and even by today's standards maybe, you as a fighter pilot on a carrier against an overwhelming enemy that wants to destroy mankind. I mean, 
this guy had just published the game I had pictured in my mind for years. How could that possibly be? This was exactly like Battlestar Galactica, but this time you could man the wiper yourself. There were characters that you could relate and talk to. And it got better and better with each Wing Commander in the series. Wing Commander 3 did see a return of Mark Hamill, which I really like and adore a lot, as the main protagonist. The game featured live action cinematics between missions. This was just like the movie, but you could influence with where the story was going. Needless to say, I played all of them. I loved them, and then came Privateer. A sandbox game where you could make your fortune as a merchant in space, pirate, bounty hunter, whatever, you name it. It had missions, things to explore, cinematics, you could upgrade your ship and equipment. One could say, it was one of the first single player open world games in a space setting with uh, maybe Elite being the first, but Elite never had this immersion like Privateer had. Years passed by. And so did the Wing Commander series. It vanished, as did Chris Roberts, who took a break from the software industry just about when I got my first job. I have remained a passion for space games since. With the triumph of Ultima Online and EverQuest 2, sooner or later multiplayer space games had to emerge. I played Star Wars Galaxies. I hated and loved it equally at the same time for what it was and for what it wasn't. I played Earth and Beyond for a while, but then the game got axed by Sony Online Entertainment, thank you. And finally I found my way into EVE Online. I loved the look of the game, but I didn't like the feel. The learning curve was steep. I dug into it for some months, but the game never clicked with me. I found it strange that my avatar was a ship instead of a person. The game was static and emotionally uninvolving. I finally cancelled my subscription came back every now and then for a month or two, but the game never managed to win me over. Well, life goes on and I can call myself a happy man. I'm a husband and a father to two wonderful sons. We build Legos together and I tell them of Luke and Darth and Boba Fett, about the force and space and the promise it has in store for us if we dare to dream and imagine. And now, all of a sudden, Chris Roberts comes out of the box, the only person that has ever managed to come close to my childhood dreams. He will do a new space game, Star Citizen. I am sure you have heard about it, the forthcoming of the savior of PC gaming, Gidi Yidi Yada and so on. It is totally crowdfunded, I guess you might have heard the buzz, but what will it be like? A new Wing Commander with better graphics? A new freelancer slash privateer? His answer is, it will be all of it. It will be a long narrative driven single player campaign with choices, dialogues and cutscenes. It will feature multiplayer ships, even capital ships that you can man with your buddies. Top it off with a persistent multiplayer universe with over 400, maybe 500 planets in a sandbox game and you pretty much get the broader picture here. In short, Chris Roberts is trying to build a game he already had pictured in his mind 20 years ago but could not do then because of budget or technical limitations. Sounds nice. But should you or I believe it, I ask. After all, I am no kid any longer. Nor am I a fool. I'm a grown-up man that have heard too many promises from game developers or publishers in his life. I have witnessed the downfall of Star Wars Galaxies, Earth and Beyond and Star Wars The Old Republic. None of these games have really lived up to their promises for various reasons. If you as a publisher can live up to the expectations you are done with, prepare for incoming shitstorms, you really get no second chance for your first impression, so you bury the thing or you go free to play with microtransactions and live somewhat longer, but let's face the fact, your product did not live up to your promises. With that in mind, why should I believe a man that I have not heard of in over 10 years? What if this is just a scam? Well, I invite you, go over to the website of Star Citizen, in fact any website with coverage of Star Citizen will do. Take a time and listen to or read Chris Roberts' interviews. That's what I did. This man is driven by an inner fire, 
that is beyond salesmanship. This man is that serious and passionate about what he wants to do. His positive energy is invigorating both his crew but also the player base. He will pass 20 million dollars in crowdfunding easily before year's end. He wants this game to be made. He ultimately wants to play it himself. The development team really listens to the potential player base and the publisher is well. You are. The players have a big say in development and game features. That might just be the reason to win you over if you haven't backed yet. But if that still isn't enough, I tell you, I backed the game. And why? I finally realized that Chris Roberts, when he was a kid like me, he has been to the same movies like me. His and my childhood heroes are basically the same. When he looked up to the stars as a kid, I'm sure the stars held the same promise for him like they held for me. Chris Roberts is building the game because he ultimately wants to play it himself. Now as a grown-up he will make his childhood wish come true. He might also do it for you and me, but don't be fooled. There's some healthy egoism involved here and I think that's a good thing. Will this game live up to your dreams and expectations you might ask? Well I got news for you, prepare to be disappointed. There are too many expectations that might contradict each other. I want a new Wing Commander with better graphics. I want EVE Online but with a cockpit. I want to blow things up in space. I want to run around planets and kill stuff. I want to roleplay in stations. I want to craft stuff. I want a love interest. I want my lightsaber. I want more boobs. I want more booze. You might find that the game will not exactly mirror what you expected or hope it to be when it's done. But it will be made. And it will be worth the wait. Chris Roberts has a dream that might be very similar to yours or mine. And one thing is for sure, prepare to be immersed. All of Chris games are about immersion, story and believability. You will get attached, involved and addicted. You might get or not get boobs or booze. You might not get to blow up as many things as you like in the end. There might be not so much PvP as you have hoped for, but this will be a hell of a game with scope and vision. And nobody can deny it looks damn sexy already. If you have not backed yet, I invite you to join robertspaceindustry.com and take a look for yourself. You get daily updates on the development process of the game. You will never witness anything like this game being made. You can watch this baby grow day by day because they show it off daily, hourly and that alone is worth your support and that's a promise. See you in the verse. Brigand over and out.